Okay, so the first step of this problem is um, realizing that this is a force problem with torque. And we're going to then go to the diagram and set our coordinate system. So based on the way the, way the ball is rolling, we're going to say that x is positive in this direction and y is positive in this direction. Um, we're then going to go and determine the axis of rotation, which we're going to put in the center for this one. And we're going to say that rotation is going to be deemed positive when it rotates around the axis in that direction. Um, so then we're going to go look at the diagram and we're going to think about where the forces are at and where they're acting. So uh, based on the way we set our coordinate system, we have the x parallel with the incline. So when we look at the way gravity is acting, it's going to be acting straight down, which will not be parallel, which will not be per perpendicular with the incline, but will be at an angle. So we're going to have to break that up into f and x and f and y components. Um, we also have a normal force, which is acting where the ball is touching the plane. And then we also have friction which is acting parallel to the plane and um, where the ball is rolling on the incline. And this is static friction. So from there, we're going to um, create a table where we are going to look at all of our forces and we're going to break up um, the forces into X components, Y components, and torque. So the first force we're going to look at is the uh, force of gravity. And um, this one we're going to have to break into components, like I said before. So the plane is um, parallel to the incline, so the force of gravity is going to be acting at an angle uh, this way. So um, like we usually do, we have... Uh, f and y and f of x and we can find these by uh, breaking this into cosine and sine so the sine of theta is going to equal f of x over f of g and the cosine of theta is going to equal f of y over f of g and um, we can say this because uh, basically Using some geometry, we can say that the theta of the incline of the plane um, is equal to the theta of um, the force of gravity within the plane as well. So saying that those angles are congruent, we can uh, then use sine and cosine to figure out um, what these components are going to be of the force of gravity. So for the f of x, we have mg sine theta. For f of y, we have negative mg cosine theta. And then for a torque, we're going to say the torque is zero. And we're saying the torque is zero because we made the axis of rotation in the center of the ball. So uh, there's no r component to it. Um, it's acting right at the radius at the axis of rotation, so there's going to be no torque. Uh, our next force is going to be the normal force, and uh, for this, there's going to be uh, no x component because it's up and down. Um, it's perpendicular to the x-axis, and there is a y component, and it's going to be equal to the normal force, uh, which we'll solve for a little bit later, and the torque of this is um, going to also be zero, and that's because this is acting um, parallel to the axis of rotation, so there's not going to be any torque. And then the final force is the force of friction, and um, the force of friction is going to have a um, x component but no y component, and uh, the torque for this is going to equal 
the force, which is the force of friction, um, times the radius. So we're going to have to solve for that. Okay. Um, so after that, we're going to start looking at our equations. And we are going to first solve for the forces in the x direction. So f of x equals ma. And we know that um, we have mg sine theta. And we have the force of friction acting in the x direction. And these are going to have an acceleration that is not equal to zero. Um, and we know the force of static friction is going to be equal to mu of static friction times the normal force. So we can add that into the equation. And we're going to leave that as is for the time being. And we're going to move to uh, summing the forces in the y direction. Um, for this one, we know that there is no acceleration in the y direction because the ball is staying on the plane. So we're going to be able to set this equation equal to zero. And again, looking at our components in the uh, y, y direction, we have um, the normal force minus mg cosine theta. And again, the signs are just based on the way we set our plane and our coordinate system. And we're going to set that equal to zero. And we're actually going to solve this equation. And we have the normal force equals mg cosine theta. OK, and then we're also going to sum the torques. And the torque is the force and um, the radius from where the force acts to the axis of rotation. And we know we have the force of static friction times r. And we also know that torque equals i times alpha, and in, this, uh, in the problem we were given what i equals, so we can solve a little further. And we also know that uh, theta equals, or alpha equals um, ax, over r. So we can also sub that into our equation. And we also know that the force of static friction, like we said above, is equal to the mu of static friction times the normal force. So our equation is going to go to this. And also, jumping back up to this equation that we found before, we also know what the normal force equals. So we can solve this even further, or plug in even further. Mu of s equals mg cosine theta. Don't forget the r equals 1 half mr squared ax over r. And then we can um, kick take that r away and get rid of the squared and leave the singular r just from multiplication. So we have this equation equaling m of s cosine theta r equals one half m r a x. And then we're going to leave this for a second. Um, we don't know what a of x is right now, and we need to uh, find an equation to solve for a of x. So we're going to go back up to um, this original equation. Oopsies, that's the wrong thing. This equation, because that has the a of x in there. And uh, I'll just bring it over here. And we are 
going to um, simplify this a little bit further. So we have mg sine theta minus mu of s. And like before, we, from this equation over here, we know that um, the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. And we're going to set that equal to max still. So we can pull out the g and we can cancel an m on both sides. So we have g sine theta minus mu of s cosine theta equaling to a of x. Um, so we now have two equations, this one, oopsies, this equation, and this equation with an a of x in it. And uh, we can now substitute into the equation to get rid of a of x and uh, solve for theta. So we're going to go over here. And this equation is now going to become... And then just doing some simple algebra, um, we can cancel the m's, we can cancel the r's, we can cancel the g's, and we're going to have a mu of s cosine theta on this side, and uh, we're going to have a one half sine theta, we can distribute the one half, and then a uh, one half mu of s cosine theta. And again, just continuing with algebra. We are going to get 3 halves mu of s cosine theta equals 1 half sine theta. Um, so this is our answer. This is our final answer. And uh, at this point, we start doing some reflection. Um, there's also another thing that I want to go back and talk about, um, why we decided to set, um, mu of s, um, or f of s equal to mu of s n. So, uh, we did this because they asked for the minimum coefficient of static friction. So, in order to find that, we need to find, um, the maximum value of f of s, um, to get the minimum mu of s. Basically, uh, that would make sure that the cylinder started to roll and it wouldn't be slipping. Anyways, so back down to the reflection part. So um, now we're looking back up at our problem and, and thinking about what would happen maybe if we plugged in a couple of different options for theta and what a positive theta looks like. Um, in my initial solution, when I did the exam, I had a uh, negative tangent, and um, this is kind of based on the way we set up our coordinate system, but it made things a little bit confusing. But um, it makes sense that the static friction is most likely going to be positive. Um, I guess it could be negative, too. It's going to be sine over cosine. Um but basically, it makes sense that it's one-third of tangent theta. Um, and I guess we could go back in and plug in a couple um, couple values for theta to figure this out, maybe.